we have a wonderful topic that we're covering today, stress reduction and immunity boosting. Two conversations that are absolutely pivotal to discuss and have some focus on right now, just because of what's going on in the world. But it's kind of crazy that it's taken this pandemic to bring people in to focus on this stuff. Since stress reduction and immunity boosting is things that we really should have in our day-to-day -day lives, regardless of what's going on in the world. So thank you all for tuning in today. Just to get started, when it comes to yoga and stress management and immunity, there's two discussions that we're having. One, what's happening in the mind, and then number two, what's happening in the body. Those systems are affected by each other, so it's really important just to become a little bit more self-aware in those areas. And also paying attention to what you're giving to yourself before you feel that you're facing a really, really stressed out situation or before your body is fighting a really, really stressed out situation. And what I mean by that is that when it comes to stress reduction, it's really difficult to expect ourselves to manage stress when we haven't practiced the skills and then our life confronts us with a really stressful situation. So it comes down to prevention rather than managing an intervention. Same thing with getting sick or having an illness. We wanna build our body immunity up. We wanna build ourselves up with support so that when the virus does hit us or when we do get a cold, that we're ready to fight and manage that and that our body is ready to fight and manage that. With yoga getting involved in this, there's the physical aspect of number one, just staying moving. You know, Whether it's doing yoga or exercising, those are two very important things just to keep our body going and get circulation and to really start to turn and uh, create movement within our lymph system or our immune system. And then there's also the mental aspect, which really comes down to the stress management and how can we have some mental clarity to better face these issues that we're confronted with. Um, I'm doing another webinar that's on this topic next weekend. That one is a paid webinar because we're going to dive a little bit deeper into some clinical background and uh, more scientific studies and tools and techniques that we can use in our day-to-day -day lives to increase our stress management skills. But at the end of the day, it really just comes down to being uh, aware and noticing when our emotions start to rise and spike up, whether it's fear anxiety, sadness, as that stuff starts to bubble up, can we acknowledge it and manage it enough to a point where it doesn't completely distract us? And that's how we can also kind of start to shift our focus on resolutions, on solutions, rather than the problem that we might be facing. So it's definitely a mind game. What I hope that you guys get out of the practice of yoga today, and we'll do a little bit of a guided meditation at the end, is I hope that we start to pull your mind into your body, get a little bit of a practice of that. And as the mind shifts to the body, comes more into the present moment of what's actually happening in front of you, that you start to feel that stress reduction in yourself, and that you can start to notice those symptoms of stress even dissipate by the end of this webinar and this class that we're gonna do together. With, the, with that skill, I hope you can take it out into your own world, maybe integrate a couple of the poses that we practiced today into your day-to-day -day life or maybe even every other day. It doesn't have to be a half hour practice or hour long practice, even just doing one or two poses a day can be really, really beneficial. On a more technical note, the things that we're gonna be practicing are gonna be back bends, twists, like one or two forward bends and then inversions. These are all very important to manage our immunity and start to reduce stress. Back bends are great for emotionally stabilizing, overall starting to uplift emotions in ourselves. So even just sitting with the chest open, even standing tall with the chest nice and broad has a certain aspect of emotional stabilizing and emotional balance to it. Twists start to get the actual organic body moving, starts to shift those hormones in our body and really get any stagnant fluids or cells that are not really doing much because we're not moving much, starts to get them a little bit more active and helps manage toxic waste. And so we can actually eliminate that stuff out of our bodies. And then we have uh, forward bends, they start to draw us inward. 
tune ourselves to our being, start to notice those signs and symptoms of stress so that we can catch them before they take over our thinking process. And then we have inversions. Inversions are a very sure way to get you pulled from your mind to your body. Not only does it take a certain amount of physical effort to do them, but it also getting upside down is great for our circulatory system and our immune, immune system, our lymph system. So those are what we're really going to dive into today. What you're going to need is a couple of props, a strap or a belt, something to sit on and support yourself that's soft or, um, you know, can be folded into a different height. So towels, blankets, things like that. You're going to need something to replace blocks if you don't have yoga blocks with you. I did do a video on toilet paper roll yoga. I don't know if you guys got to see that, but I did a couple of different yoga poses just with toilet paper rolls. So those are an option as well. Um, as we go through class, I'm gonna practice and teach just like a regular Iyengar yoga class, meaning that there's gonna be a moment when you might watch me and observe kind of the actions that I'm taking. And then I'll give you instruction for us to do it as a group. Now, if you're familiar with these poses or you've done this kind of stuff before, you can just dive right in at your own accord and go for whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, I am going to show a couple of variations. So specifically for the inversions, if you're not going uh, comfortable going upside down or perhaps you're menstruating or pregnant, then you're going to practice the variations. You're also going to have to be a little bit more self-aware to discern whether or not you're physically supported to do these inversions. So if you feel concerned or you don't feel like you have enough support to get into it safely, then I'd recommend practicing another variation. Unfortunately, I can't see you, um, so it's going to be difficult for me to give you personal feedback and really point out those safety aspects through the practice. So just really exercise that self-discernment on what's good for you today or if you need to practice a variation. With that said, I'm gonna give you tons of information for you to consider and make that decision for yourself. At the end of this, you'll have an opportunity to ask me any questions or let me know any feedback or comments. And I overall just really look forward to hearing what you guys think about all of this. So to get started, you're gonna want a space that's nice and clear, quiet, we are gonna use a wall potentially today. If you're not, uh, or if you are familiar with a lot of these poses, you don't necessarily need the wall. It is gonna be something that we use for downward facing dog and the inversions. But if you're used to practicing those things, then again, it's really just an add on to have and not fully necessary. So we're gonna go ahead and get started now. We're gonna start seated. I have some blankets that I'm sitting on. And the reason that I'm sitting on these blankets is because when I sit on the floor, my knees, they are a little bit higher than my hips here. And what this does is it actually starts to lift up my center of gravity and my spine has to work harder to sit upright. As soon as I sit on some support, my knees become more level with the floor and they also become more level with my hips. This starts to lower our center of gravity and physically makes it easier for us to sit upright. If you feel any tension in your back or your body just coming into this seated posture, I'd recommend sitting against the wall. We're gonna start with the legs crossed, the feet are underneath the thighs in swastikasana, this is peaceful pose. And then you can take your hands alongside your hips and come to fingertips. Sometimes we have the hands flat, but today we're gonna have our, our fingertips on the blanket stack. And as you bend your elbows back to the wall behind you, take a smooth, steady inhale, a smooth, steady exhale, and try and roll the shoulders onto the back of the body. You should feel that there's a little bit of an openness that comes to the front of the armpits, but there's also this spreading sensation that comes across the collarbones and out to the shoulders. Allow your eyes to soften and close. Just observe the different sensations that might be going on in your body right now. Sometimes there's sensations that might build up in different locations of the body. Some examples might be heat in the throat or the head. Maybe you're even feeling some heat in the abdomen or the chest. Notice if there's any tension 
in the abdomen or the jaw. And as you gently lengthen your inhale and exhale, try to let go of that tension. As you use your breath to really tune into your body, taking the intellectual mind into the present moment, let go of any gripping or tension that you might be holding on to from any thoughts or from your day. Really start to tune into the present moment. On the next inhale, bring the hands together in Namskarasana. This is prayer pose. Use that gentle pressure between the palms. Roll the shoulders back. Draw the shoulders towards the spine so you still feel more of that stretch in the front of the shoulder, really that front of the armpit. Let go of any tension that might be held in the legs, such as the thighs. As you gently press the legs down towards the floor, try to lift the chest up a little bit higher. As you exhale, release any tension in the eyes, in the forehead, or the jaw. We're going to start class today by chanting three ohms together as a group. If you've never done this before, you're welcome to just listen or give it a try in the comfort of your own home. The sound OM is spelled A-U-M, and it starts kind of like when you're at a dentist, there's this ah uh, sound. The ah uh, sound gets shaped with our mouth and our lips, kind of like you're blowing a bubble from chewing bubble gum. So the sound goes from ah. Uh, so there's kind of this transition that comes from the shape of the mouth. So we'll practice chanting three ohms together as a group. Let's go ahead and start with an inhale. Uh, 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 notice if any tension started to rise in the face or in the body and let it go with your exhale as you keep the chest lifting up tall shoulders rolling back bring your chin down to the chest Surrendering the head to the heart, intellect to intuition. Then you'll release the hands to the thighs. You can slowly lift your head and open your eyes. So to get started, we're actually gonna just do a couple of neck rolls. So hands coming alongside the hips. You can watch for a moment and then join in. I'm gonna start by taking my chin down to the chest and I'm really just rolling this 180 degree circle around the front of my body. So while my chin is in line with the chest, I'm rolling now my right ear over my right shoulder, feeling that whole stretch across the left side while taking the shoulders back. You can do this as quickly or as slowly as you'd like. Maybe taking a few breaths with the ear over the shoulder. And while you do this, try to keep the spine lifting up, the chest lifting up, shoulders rolling back. You'll start to feel that trapezius muscle that spans across the tops of the shoulders and along the back of the neck, it starts to stretch. And as you exhale, you can let go of any tension that might be held up in those areas. Sometimes in the mornings, I'll hold from side to side for a little bit longer, although the movement is nice to get the spine and the body moving. And then last few times, last few breaths, doing these neck rolls just from shoulder to, to chest to shoulder. And then you'll end with the chin in line with the chest. You can go ahead and lift your head up. Now still with the hands alongside the hips, just start to roll your shoulders for a moment. And notice as you roll the shoulders, you can do both directions, but notice that there's essentially four directions we can roll the shoulders in. You know, number one, lifting them up, 
two, rolling them forward, three, rolling them down, and then back. And as we create this circular motion, really try to emphasize those four specific directions. So shoulders lifting up, forward, down, and back. And just notice what sensations really pop up. If you feel any tension, such as pinching or pain as you do this, then just be mindful and maybe limit how much you press yourself. It's okay to feel a stretching and maybe even an achy style of stretching, but if you feel any pinching or pain, it might be a sign to back off of that practice a little bit. So then during these last few rolls, really end by taking the shoulders back and down the spine. You wanna still feel a little bit of that stretch along the sides of the neck, along the tops of the shoulders while the shoulders move down the back. Now we wanna keep this position as we move in through class today. Really try and open this front of the armpit space, open the chest up nice and wide. For a moment, observe which leg is closest to you and we'll switch the cross of the legs. Now we're gonna move into a pose called Parvatasana, a little mountain pose. Parvatasana. So I'm gonna demonstrate and then you can go ahead and join me if you're familiar, then we'll go into this together. I'm lacing my fingers together and pressing the palms away from me. I still wanna keep that direction of my shoulders moving back and down the spine while I take my arms up and overhead. Usually when we reach the arms up, the shoulders like to come with us, but see if you can keep the shoulders pinning down the spine and instead lift the chest. You should feel the side waists start to lift away from the hips and the pelvis. So you take a few breaths here, press your thighs down into the floor and try and lift your chest two inches higher, keeping the arms stick straight. You can always have the hands forward slightly if there's any pain or pinching or discomfort that comes up in the shoulder joint. And then bring the hands down, notice which pinky is on the loose end and we'll switch the grasp of the fingers. Rolling the shoulders back and down the spine as you take the arms up and overhead. Parvatasana, a little mountain pose. Thighs down as you lift the chest up. Notice if you're holding the breath, or if you can gently lengthen your inhale and exhale with the face and the eyes soft. And then bring the hands down, and we'll do each side one more time. So back to that first lacing of the fingers, pressing the palms away, really try to spread from the heel of your palm out to the pinky side and the thumb side here. Arms straight, shoulders rolling back and down, taking the arms up and overhead. As you take the armpits forward, reach the wrists back, just intensifying that back bend action with the eyes and the face soft. And then hands down, last side, last time, switching the lacing of the fingers. Pressing the palms away, arms up and overhead. So there's a couple of details with the form that I might have brought up. But during these last few breaths, just observe your body as an entire unit. Notice how there's this balance between this intellectual process of what we're doing and this experiential aspect of feeling what the body is going through and actually acknowledging the sensations that come up in the physical body. And then bringing the hands down, sitting nice and tall. Next, we're gonna do a little bit of a side lean stretch. So we can do this together. I'm just demonstrating really quickly. It looks like we have, oh, speaker stopped working. Okay, Sierra, let me know. Since I'm taking a break, I see that there's a couple more people in here. Hey, Cheryl Ann. <laughs> I'll go ahead and make sure that they're unmuted or allowed to talk. Okay, so back to our side stretching. So I'm gonna start by stretching over to the left. You can take your left hand on the blanket stack of the floor, just kind of lean off to the side. Now as you do this, still try to lift the chest up. Notice if that right hip wants to come with you or if you can pin the right hip down while that whole right side of the body is lifting up and over. If your shoulder feels comfortable doing so, you can even go ahead and take the arm alongside the ear and stretch over to the side. Taking a smooth steady inhale, smooth steady exhale, allow the thighs to fall to the floor and feel heavy on the floor. And then coming back up, right hand down alongside your hip, reach the left arm up and overhead, a nice stretch in the left side of the body. 
So you press the thighs down, lift the chest up. See how that whole left side starts to stretch and open really on the side of the spine. And back to center or each side one more time, bending off to the left. Try to avoid just kind of hunkering down and falling towards the floor. Instead, we want to feel this uprighted lift and stretch off to the side. And then back to center, last side, last time. Gently lengthening your inhale and exhale. Notice what the shoulders are doing even here in this position. Eyes on the face soft. And then back to center, sitting up nice and tall. All right, so now what you're gonna need is most likely two blankets. We're gonna roll one up. So again, you can use beach towels to do this as well if you don't have yoga towels or even linens. But ultimately, when I fold my blankets, because I'm usually teaching at a studio, we call this fold shelf fold. I'm gonna unfold this once from shelf fold and roll the longer edge. So now I have this rolled blanket here. Again, you can do this with a towel. If you normally have neck tension or tension in your shoulders, it'll also be beneficial to have an extra folded blanket on the other side of this rolled blanket. I'm gonna show you what we're up to. We're just gonna do a little bit of a back bend over this rolled blanket here. And then you're welcome to join me when you feel you have an idea of where we're headed with all of this. So I'm starting with my elbows on the rolled blanket. I really want this to hit right underneath my armpit in my upper back. So as I spread the elbows off to the sides, you should feel like this is really starting to lift the rib cage off the floor. But again, this is essentially tucking up underneath that armpit. Now the other blanket goes underneath my head and this will help alleviate any tension in the neck or the shoulders. It's not totally necessary, you don't have to have it, but if you feel tension in your body or in your spine without it, then go ahead and grab it. Another time it would be beneficial is if you come back and you notice that your chin is jetting up towards the ceiling. That's when you're gonna want some additional support in the back of the head. Now from this position, the low back is comfortable. We'll straighten the legs here. You can see my arms are kind of in this goal post or cactus position. My elbows are in line with the shoulders, wrists in line with the elbows, here in this nice supported back bend. There are times when we're a little bit more active in this and other times when we just let go of everything everywhere. So if you haven't joined me yet, you can go ahead and come into this position here. Start with the knees bent, elbows on the rolled blanket, and you're gonna spread the elbows off to the side. You should feel that rolled blanket essentially rest across the back, right in line with the bottom of your armpit. If you've ever seen those heart rate monitor chest bands that people wear, it's usually tucked right underneath the armpit around their chest. And that's essentially where you want this blanket to hit you on your upper back. And then resting the hands and the arms on the floor, you can go ahead and grab a blanket for underneath the head if you'd like, and if that would make you feel more comfortable. Now before straightening the legs, just take a few breaths here with the feet flat on the floor and knees bent up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, start to draw your belly button in towards the spine. And notice how you can almost tuck your tailbone towards your heels. As you do this, you might notice that the shoulders tense up or that the upper back starts to tense and maybe even press against that rolled blanket. But notice as you tuck your tailbone, see if you can keep the chest soft. Let go of any gripping in the neck or the throat. And then you'll lift the toes, scrub and press your heels away from you. As you gently lengthen your inhale and exhale, and allow the eyes to close and really just focus on my voice, my verbal direction for now. We're gonna start with just a little bit more activity in the legs as your tailbone tucks towards the heels and you keep a slight flexion in your feet, try to let go of any gripping in the upper body. So we're keeping the lower body a little bit more active for this moment, trying to soften and relax the shoulders, the arms, the neck. As you gently lengthen your inhale and exhale, 
Try to fill the upper outer corners of your chest. As if you can breathe and inhale into your collarbones. And if your back feels comfortable doing so, you can let go of the legs. So just relax them, allowing the toes to splay off to the sides. It's really easy for the mind to wander since it's something that it naturally does. But as you catch it wandering, gently bring it back to your body, back to focusing on your breath. And to come up, we'll bend the knees so the feet are flat on the floor. You can take the elbows alongside your body, bring the elbows underneath you, and then come up to sit. We're going to move into a seated forward bend called Pashimottanasana. You're going to want to sit on enough support that the spine feels comfortable sitting with the legs straight. So you can grab your support and then have a strap or some blocks nearby. So I'm gonna substitute my blocks with toilet paper rolls just for the sake of relation if you don't have any props with you. And then I have a belt that I'm using today in replacement of a strap. Now I wanna sit up high enough. I hope you can see my side waist here. I'm gonna turn a little bit more. I wanna sit up on enough height so that I can actually start to lift my uh, hips and my low back up as opposed to allowing them to round towards the wall behind me. I made a comment about the tailbone tucking, which is great support for the hips and the pelvis. However, we don't want it to be happening so much that there's some aching in the low back and that there's essentially this lack of support. Instead, we want to feel like we can turn the inner thighs down towards the floor draw the abdomen in and sit up nice and tall. So if you need some more support to accomplish that, go ahead and grab it. Usually when the hamstrings are tight is when you're gonna notice more of that rounding in the low back. And just to start, use your blocks or you can even bring your hands to your legs. And go ahead and take the legs a little bit wider than hip width apart. As you press your hands down on the blocks or your legs, try to roll the shoulders back, just like we were practicing earlier. And if it helped doing those shoulder rolls, you can go ahead and do that again too. But ultimately having the shoulders moving back and down the spine. You can start to baby step the blocks forward or take your hands a little bit farther down your legs. And notice what happens. Do the shoulders start to round forward? Does the back start to round a little bit as you do this? And if so, you can bring the blocks back towards yourself, try to create that form and that structure that you can keep the spine long. Now eventually we wanna to go to our maximum. We wanna find out where is that boundary of practice? So you can walk your hands as far down your legs as you feel comfortable today. Try to roll the shoulders back, lift the chest forward. Take a smooth city inhale and exhale, and then let the head hang. So even though the head is hanging forward, that doesn't mean that the shoulders are. Instead, the shoulders are doing somewhat of the opposite should feel as though they're moving towards the wall behind you, rolling onto the back of your body. And then you can walk your hands back towards yourself, sit up nice and tall. So now for this next practice, same pose, Pashimottanasana, intense stretch of the west or the back side of the body. This time I'm gonna use my strap and what I'm doing is I still have my feet wide, but I'm gonna bend my knees Lift the chest, roll the shoulders back. If you don't have a strap, you can even do this holding onto the feet or holding onto the legs maybe. But the strap is quite nice and builds a nice resistance for this type of practice. So chest is lifting up, I'm leaning forward and I almost have my torso essentially laying on my thighs here. Now I wanna keep the shoulders moving back and the chest lifting forward and as I start to straighten the legs, now I really have to bend deep in my hips in order to keep that connection of the side waist on my thighs. So this is what we're gonna practice. If you're not doing it with me now, let's go ahead and do it together. So you might be sitting up tall, knees bent, 
either holding onto the feet or the strap. Then start to straighten the legs and see if you can bend in the hips as opposed to allowing the back to round for this practice. The knees might not straighten all the way. The legs may stay bent a little bit, which is absolutely fine, but really focus on deepening the hips and keeping the chest broad. You can grab the feet, great, go ahead and do so, and then let the head hang. Your knees might, might be bent slightly, but we want the spine to be long. You might be holding on to the legs rather than the feet, but really prioritize having the shoulders rolled back. And then gently lengthen your inhale and exhale. When it comes to managing stress, anxiety, even depression and sadness, you might find in a Iyengar yoga practice that we actually hold the poses for a little bit longer than normal. So especially these forward bends, usually it's recommended to hold them for two to five minutes just to let the mind cool and start to move into the body. For today, you can go ahead and start to push yourself up to sit and set your props aside. And come into Baddha Konasana, so bound angle pose. This is where the feet are together and the knees are wide. I've just switched my position on my mat so that you guys can see me a little bit better, but you can always kind of stay where you're at. Baddha Konasana, feet together, knees wide. You can take a moment, lean off to the side on one leg. See if you can touch it to the floor. Now the other knee might come up and that's okay, but go ahead and give a little pressure with your hand and see if you can start to open that hip up. I mentioned in the beginning of this webinar something about the immune system and, and the lymph system and ultimately in our immune system a part of it is a series of lymph nodes that are stashed and buried in the groins of our body. So we really have them along the jaw, the base of the neck, the armpits, and here in the hip creases and the creases of the pelvis. And now we'll lean over to the other side I'm leaning over on my right leg, stretching through that left leg, trying to take it to the ground. Even though it doesn't go there, I'm really just trying to get some openness here in my hips. And then as we come back up to center, you can give a little gentle pressure taking the legs down to the floor. If you have any tension in the knees, there's a couple of different things that we can do. Number one is keep the toe ball mounts pressing in towards each other. Usually it's easy to let the feet splay and there's some space between the feet, but really try and press those big toe ball mounts into each other as you do this to stabilize the knee. And then you'll bring the legs together and go ahead and straighten them. So now we're going to actually use the wall and we're going to want some support for underneath our head. I'm going to move some of my props out of the way. And then I'm actually gonna change the orientation of my mat and the position of the computer. Now I wanna use some wall space. So I'm gonna turn my mat so that the narrow edge of the mat is up against the wall. Again, this is just a nice addition if you have some wall space at your house to use. And then I'm gonna go ahead and shift the position of the computer so that you guys can see off to the side here. I hope that window isn't too blaring bright but okay so now i want some support underneath my head you can use a toilet paper roll or a folded towel or blanket for this and i'll show you where we're headed so i have my props nearby we're going to start in downward facing dog so adho mukha svanasana if you spread your thumbs and your index finger you're going to see there's this little l shape that's created we want to take that up to the wall so I have my hands in what we call a check mark position, wrists slightly forward from the shoulders, knees slightly back from the hips. I'm gonna curl my toes under and lift the hips up. Today I'm taking my legs wide, as wide as the mat. I'm not very concerned if your heels don't touch the floor, but what I want you to feel is that the hands are pressing down and the hips are lifting up, 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 up towards the ceiling here. If you're not in this position yet, go ahead and join me. So hands slightly forward from the shoulders, knees slightly back from the hips, curl the toes under, lift the hips up. Now, once you're in downward facing dog, bend your knees towards your chest. Notice how you can actually press the hands down, lengthen the side waists here, but it also helps you lift the hips up, lift the sit bones up towards the ceiling. Then try to straighten your legs, keeping that lift of the hips 
going as high towards the ceiling as you can. See if you can maintain all that lift as you take your heels down to the floor. Often what happens is the hips sink, they drop to the heels. See if you can keep the hips lifting up, 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 even as the heels move down to the floor. All right, then coming down to rest, knees wide, toes together. This pose is Adho Mukha uh, Virasana, downward facing hero's pose. You can let the head rest, let the arms rest if they're feeling fatigued. Now this next time we're gonna add some support underneath the head. So you can place that right underneath your chest. Have a couple of options nearby so that you can build it up or lower it down as you feel is beneficial. Looks like I got another screen that popped open. All right. So hands coming to the wall, wrists slightly forward from the shoulders, knees slightly back from the hips. I have some support for my head. And I'm coming into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now as the head moves to the floor, we wanna be mindful that we're not just dropping and opening up the armpits and allowing that neck to get tense as the shoulders move on to the back of the body. And instead, see if you can turn your inner arms up, outer arms down to the floor. Although the arms and the legs are active here, kind of soften any tension in the neck or the throat. Gently lengthen your inhale and exhale. Just be here for a few more breaths, trying to soften the neck and the throat. As you turn your inner arms up, outer arms down, there's almost this sensation of trying to pull the shoulders away from the sides of the neck. So you should feel that the space across the tops of the shoulders is actually quite wide. And then coming down to rest, knees wide, toes together, rest the head on the floor. And you can push yourself up to sit. So now we're gonna start moving into some inversions, specifically two inversions. They do require a little bit more props with the support um, if you're not familiar with this practice, but I'm gonna show you some options. So if you're menstruating or are pregnant, you're not gonna be going upside down. Instead, you're gonna practice some variations. The first variation is Upavista Konasana, taking the legs wide. So you can use your mat to measure where your heels are in space, but essentially this is where you're gonna be for your practice today if you're menstruating or pregnant, or maybe just a little bit concerned about going upside down on your own if you've never done it before. The other pose that you can practice is taking the legs wide and hands to the floor or hands to some blocks or maybe even toilet paper rolls, <laughs> but being in this position here. So this is good to keep the legs a little bit more active, help support the hips a little bit more. Depending, if you're feeling fatigued, I'd recommend bringing some energy to the body and practicing this. But if you're feeling stressed out and like you kind of need some restoration, go ahead and practice Upavista Konasana, just taking the legs wide. So those are the variations for this next pose that I'm gonna demonstrate for you. What we're gonna practice is tripod headstand. So this is Shirshasana 2. I'm gonna show you a very minimal supported version. And then I'm gonna show you a version that has a significant amount of support for those who have never practiced this before. So I started with a blanket on the floor. It's kind of this narrow folded position because I'm gonna have it underneath my head. In tripod headstand, we're gonna use the wall today. So I'm gonna demonstrate really briefly and show you kind of a minimal support version. And then I'm gonna show you a more supported version with some additional blocks. In tripod headstand, we'll normally practice with the feet wide, hands in line with the ankles, and then I come down and I take my head to the floor. I have my wrists under my elbows, and elbows are in line with the shoulders. From here, you can lift the legs up, or you can even come to this position here and just try to get your balance. Either way, we do want to go upside down today and get our lymph and our circulatory system moving. And then to come out, you can 
either bring one leg down at a time or come out the way that you came in with the legs wide and then we press ourselves up. So that's the more traditional experienced version if you have practiced this before. Now, if you haven't, you're gonna want some more support. So with some blocks, you can have one block on the low setting, another block on the high setting, or you can use two toilet paper rolls, maybe even three of them. What's really important to know with the toilet paper rolls is that you kind of got to get your weight centered right on that cardboard cylinder. For me, it's a little bit low. Um, let's see if I can, I don't know what everyone's prop situation is like, so I might do one shoulder with toilet paper rolls and the other with the block. <laughs> so it'll be something like this because you want your shoulders and really the back of the body comes all the way up against the wall. So if you're not familiar with this, you can start legs on the floor, head comes down, shoulders come to the support. You'll want to squeeze them in so that the shoulder itself is really supported here on the top of the shoulder. This stack of three doesn't feel as strong as the blocks, but it kind of gets the job done enough for me to come up into tripod sheer shasana. My head is on the floor for this. So there's our, those are some options. Now again, we have our variations. If you're not comfortable doing this, or you've never done this before, I'd love to watch you do it <laughs> if you haven't done it before, before you practice on your own, just to help with safety measures, but practice some discernment. So whichever you're practicing today, go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna stay down on the floor here and just kind of give you some verbal instruction so that I'm not distracted with doing the pose myself and I can kind of cue you through it. If you're sitting with the legs wide, then you're gonna want some support under the hips to sit up tall. If you're going up into tripod shirshasana and you haven't already gone up, you're gonna walk your hands so that they're in front of the blocks, bring your head to the floor, shoulders to the top of the blocks, then you can lift the legs up or you can bring your knees to the elbows, coming into that egg-like position and then straighten the legs up the wall. Whichever pose you're in, try to take a few breaths, drawing the shoulders back and breathing into the collarbones. As you exhale, draw the belly button in towards the spine. Try to press through the heels so the legs are stick straight. Let's soften the face and the eyes. Let go of any unnecessary tension that might be held in the face or the jaw. And then you can go ahead and come down at your own accord. If you've never practiced this before, way to go for taking the attempt and the initiation to do so. And if you have practiced this, you know, you can stay into it for incrementally longer amounts of time each time you practice it. Ultimately, it's recommended to be in these poses and specifically inversions for anywhere from two to 10 minutes. Usually we start with two minutes or you know, even 30 seconds to one minute, get to two minutes, then try to press the five minutes. And then once you've mastered that five minute length of time, trying to incrementally get to 10 minutes of being upside down. So as you come down, you can rest your head on the floor. If you're in Upavista Konasana, you can bring the feet together, knees wide, sitting up nice and tall. Now we're gonna start moving on into our next inversion. You can set the blocks aside. Depending on the props that you have, we might use them again, but ultimately we're gonna practice what's called shoulder stand, Salamba Sarvangasana. Now I have a couple of blankets that are already folded the way that I'd like to have them. I've folded them this way. Normally we would actually unfold it once more and have some sort of support like this. But if you have minimal blankets, then you can fold it one more time and you have that extra height. So I have 
these three blankets folded multiple times. Now I have a bolster and an additional blanket and I know that a bolster is not super common. So what you could do in replacement of that is have your blocks. You can have two blocks kind of moving in this lengthwise here, or you can have four blocks, putting them in this position here like this. And then I like to add a blanket on top of that or a towel just to create a little softness. Now in shoulder stand today, we're gonna to be using the wall. So I want this setup to be about, eh, it kind of looks like a foot away from the wall, I would say. It's kind of like, what, one, two, three to four fists distance away from the wall. <laughs> I'm gonna demonstrate. You can go ahead and kind of get your props together. I want this space to be as high as where I'm gonna put my shoulders because this is where my low back and my hips are gonna go. And we want the spine to be supported as we come in and out of this. I'm starting by laying back with my head on the floor. My shoulders are on this blanket stack here. I'm gonna tuck my shirt in. Now one of these, this seems to be the trickiest part to coming into this is actually getting the shins to the wall. So I have to press my elbows down into the floor, take a nice deep exhale, and I can use my hands, press down, but this is a nice practice you can get into as well. And then I can take my hands to the wall and I wanna tuck my shoulders underneath me more. I wanna feel like more of my weight is on the tops of my shoulders. Then to take the legs up, I'm gonna take my knee out and straighten the leg. So here I am in Salamba Sarvangasana, shoulder stand. You can let the hands relax. After the toes are, so I have my toes curled under, my feet are flexed right now, but then you can actually point the toes up and rest the tops of the feet on the wall when you feel comfortable. So this is what we're headed into. Now again, if you're, and then coming out, you can use the hands underneath you, taking the shoulders to the floor. So if you're not comfortable doing that, or you're menstruating, or you're pregnant, then I'm gonna show you a variation. If you are practicing that version today, then you can get your prop set up for it. You can even go ahead and go up if you're familiar and confident and ready to go. For the variation, it's gonna to be to form a bridge pose. So Setu Bandha Sarvangasana. You're gonna need a block or some toilet paper rolls. Now the block has a couple of different heights just like the multiple toilet paper rolls do. You can have the block in the low setting, medium setting, high setting. And you can see this tall setting is about the same height as two toilet paper rolls. You can see that this one paper, uh, toilet paper roll is about a little bit shorter than the medium setting of the block, a little bit higher than the low setting. So I'm gonna show with the block and the toilet paper roll, just so you kind of have an idea Setu Bandha Sarvangasana has some of this uh, similar form structure as shoulder stand does that I just demonstrated. Ultimately, I want to get this big chest box. So shoulders tuck underneath. As I press my feet down, I'm lifting my hips up, but I want to come more to the tops of my shoulders here. Now from this position, you can decide if you want to have just one block on a low setting, one toilet paper roll, or maybe you feel confident having two or putting the tall block on the tall setting. Either way, you want the support to be under your tailbone, so it's quite low on the spine, and then you can straighten the legs here. So I hope you can kind of see, yeah, position of that. My hips are lifted up, shoulder is in this back bend position, while the tops of my shoulders are down on the floor. Taking a few breaths here with the legs straight, and then bringing the feet in, lifting the hips up, removing the support and letting the hips rest on the floor. So those are the poses that you have an option of practicing right now. I'll go ahead and walk you through it if you're not already in it. So if you're going up to the wall, you'll start with your head on the floor, shoulders on the blanket stack, and roll your shins towards the wall, but keep your arms next to your hips and pressing into that blanket support as opposed to coming towards the wall. 
Initially, you wanna use that pressure of the hands down to lift and hoist the hips and up and over. Now, if you're laying down on the floor and coming into bridge pose or Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, you can tuck the shoulders underneath you, turning the inner arms up, outer arms down, and then lift the hips by pressing your feet into the floor. And before you put the support under your hips, try and come to the very tops of your shoulders. And then you can grab your block or your toilet paper rolls and place it right underneath the tailbone. You can try to straighten the legs with the legs wide. The feet are slightly flexed here. Now, if you're up at the wall, you can bring your hands into this cactus or goalpost style position. Same for bridge pose. If you have the block underneath your hips. That means that the elbows are in line with the shoulders and the wrists are in line with the elbows. And even though the upper back is still active here, still as you press your arms and the tops of your shoulders down into the floor in order to lift your back ribs up, lift your shoulder blades up, there has to be some softness in the face, softness in the throat and in the eyes. Gently lengthen your inhale and exhale. As you let go of any unnecessary tension that might be held in the body, just acknowledge where your mind is going or where it's gone. And observe if it's in this intellectual place of trying to problem solve and manage these poses. Or if you can start to bring your attention into your body, observing the sensations that your body is experiencing and going through. In whatever position you're in, you can start to come out, bending the knees, shins against the wall, or bringing your feet flat to the floor if you're in bridge pose lifting the hips up and removing the support underneath you. Whatever position you're in, you're gonna lay down so that the rib cage and the hips are on the same level. If you're on the blanket support, your head might be hanging off the blanket stack and that's okay. Just allow the throat to open in that position. Now, if you're on the blanket stack, you can shift your shoulders off of the blanket. So now your shoulders and your head are on the floor while your rib cage and your hips are on the blanket stack. Still using the exhale to let go of any tension that might have risen through the practice. And then to come out. You can reach your right arm up and overhead, roll to your right side, and start to press yourself up. Now we're going to start to wind down, moving into some restorative postures. Now we're kind of hitting the time towards the end of our webinar, but you're welcome to stay into these poses as long as you feel comfortable. It's actually recommended for you to stay in them for a couple of minutes. We're just going to be there for a couple of moments and breath cycles, and then we'll move into a corpse pose and Shavasana. We're going to start in Supta Bada Konasana. You can grab your belt, or you can roll up a, one of your blankets or towels, and kind of create a makeshift strap here. So either one of these supports would work really well. Most of you are probably going to be using a belt maybe even some toilet paper rolls. That's what I'm gonna demonstrate with today. I have one toilet paper roll next to me so that they're within an, within an arm's reach. I'm taking my belt, placing it on the tops of my feet, and then I have my the tail ends of the belt alongside my hips. My feet are together, knees wide. I'm gonna pin the belt with my hips so that I can focus on laying back and laying down. I want this blanket underneath my head to support my head and my neck and feel that the shoulders are free. So I hold on to the tail ends of the belt. You can pull the legs in a little bit closer. Now usually a sensation that's quite common is that the inner thighs feel quite stretched in this position. 
it's okay to feel a stretch, but sometimes when that stretch is too intense, it's difficult for the legs to fully let go and relax. If you start to feel that some support underneath your hips or your thighs would be beneficial, then you can fold up some towels or grab some toilet paper rolls like I'm using here and come into Baddha Konasana. So if you're not joining me yet, you can go ahead and start coming into this pose. Taking the feet together, knees wide, using the belt as it rests across the tops of your feet, you're gonna sweep it along the floor and pin it under your hips. And you can start to lean back, bring your elbows to the floor and lay down flat on the floor. You can have some support underneath your head. Use the blanket so it's under your head and your neck. I feel that the shoulders are free from support. And you can pull the feet in a little bit closer to the pelvis. Maybe add some support underneath the thighs. And start to let go of any tension that might have built up from class. As you gently lengthen and soften your inhale and exhale, acknowledge the support of the floor underneath you. Start to let go of your body weight into that support. As you let go of everything, everywhere, notice if there's any tension in your face or your eyes that can also be let go of. Just allowing the breath to move through the body as it naturally would. Allow the abdomen to rise and fall, just as the lungs and the chest do with your breath. Rather than judging the process or putting a label of good or bad on that experience, try to turn your mind into more of an observation tool. And we're really just watching and observing this process without trying to change or adjust anything in the breath. The mind is usually quite active. It will easily start to wander every now and then, which is fine. You gently bring your attention back to your body and back to your breath when you acknowledge it and when you notice that happening. Thoughts come and go in the mind. Just allow them to pass through without attachment. It's almost as if you're watching clouds pass through the sky rather than getting hooked on one as it moves through your field of thought. Just allow it to move through without any attachments. It's okay for thoughts to come and go. See if you can have a general focus on your breath and on your body as that happens. And you're welcome to stay in this position of Supta Baddha Konasana, or we'll move into corpse pose. Shavasana. So for Shavasana, you'll bring the legs together and simply straighten them, laying flat on the floor, letting go of everything, everywhere, as you feel the support of the floor underneath you.
in these next few breath cycles, moments of quietness. Just allow your body to be. And then lengthen your inhale and exhale. Notice that moment, that space at the end of your exhale and before your inhale. See if you can allow that space to just linger slightly. Let go of any subconscious tension that might have risen. And then slowly place your hands on your abdomen. Appreciate your body for all that it's done and all that it will do. Appreciate your mind for taking the time to practice and harmonize with your body today. And acknowledge your heart, organ in your chest, it's dedicated to life. Welcome to stay laying down. If you're ready to come up, you can start to bend your knees. Take your time rolling over to your side. And feel free to even take a few breaths there before pressing yourself up to sit. If you've decided to come up to sit, sit comfortably. I appreciate you all for taking the time to practice yoga and to feed some personal uh, stress management and self-acknowledgement during these times. Namaste. Namaste.